Ah, the Far Cry series. There are a lot of open world games from Ubisoft, and my two personal favorites are Assassin's Creed and Far Cry. I played Far Cry 5 back when it first released in 2018, and I personally loved it, and for some reason, I completely held off on playing Far Cry New Dawn. I guess I kinda just figured it was a reskin Far Cry 5, and it wasn't really worth the playthrough, and I was kind of right, but make no mistake, there is still a lot of fun to be had in Far Cry New Dawn. Our pops always told us that people either solve problems or make problems. Far Cry New Dawn takes place 17 years after the dark and confusing ending to Far Cry 5, and you play as a captain of security. I don't really like the trend Far Cry is going with their main characters in which they never speak and don't even have names. The protagonist is a blank slate that you can customize to look what you want them to look like, even though the only time you're going to see them is when you're in the customization screen. The character you play is really similar to that of the deputy from Far Cry 5, in which you are kind of just some guy that is thrown into the world and now you have to fight a cult. Now in New Dawn, the cult you are fighting are called the Highwaymen and they are led by evil twins Mickey and Lou. Mickey and Lou were actually some pretty cool and interesting villains, but there is nothing about them that really makes them feel unique or scary in comparison to the rest of the villains from the series. In fact, it almost felt like your character could easily beat the twins at any moment. Mickey and Lou kind of took a back seat for me as well, as I was much more interested in the ending and closure to the character of Joseph C. I thought it was really cool to see the all-powerful and evil villain from Far Cry 5 appear broken and full of regret. Joseph was having to live with the consequences of killing thousands of innocents, all while trying to tame and prevent his son Ethan from craving power and making the same mistakes he did. The ending to Joseph's story was actually pretty emotional, and I actually felt really bad and cared for Joseph, which I definitely would not have said at the end of Far Cry 5. We also got to see a lot of returning characters from Far Cry 5, like Pastor Jerome, Grace Armstrong, and Nick and Kim Rai. I thought Kim Rai and her daughter Carmina were a great supporting cast, especially since in Far Cry 5 you watch Carmina be born and became her godfather. The deputy from Far Cry 5 was also in the game, although he was hardly even mentioned, but he was the judge at New Eden. You can also hire him as a gun for hire, which I thought was pretty cool. Honestly though, my biggest issue with Far Cry New Dawn's story is how short it is. There are only 22 story missions, and the short runtime doesn't allow for much development or screen time time for the twins, which is why the final boss battle feels rushed and immature. If you love Far Cry's gameplay, then you will not be disappointed by Far Cry New Dawn. The gameplay is pretty much identical to Far Cry 5, and this didn't bother me because I really liked Far Cry 5's gameplay. There are also some new features like double jump or enhanced stealth and a super punch ability that shake things up a bit and put a fun spin on Far Cry's already enjoyable gameplay. Assassinations are brutal, and the nice variety of unique guns and equipment, like the saw launcher or the unicorn flamethrower, add a bit of flavor to the combat. But... There is one major flaw that really killed a bit of the experience, and that is the complete lack of gun customization. I was super disappointed to find that Far Cry New Dawn had no gun customization. If you didn't like a scope on your weapon or wanted to have a suppressor, that's tough because the only thing you can change about your weapon is the amount of damage it does by upgrading it. If you wanted a suppressed weapon, you would have to craft an entire new one. I can't explain how much this was a buzzkill to me because I absolutely loved the customization from Far Cry 5. The lack of customization doesn't suck as much since there are still a lot of weapons that all have different purposes, but it definitely still left me disappointed. Character customization was also a bit of a downgrade from Far Cry 5 with less options for clothes and outfits. Now, the customization is a bit of a bummer, but New Dawn's take on the outpost has to be my favorite in the entire series, as they allow you to scavenge an outpost and replay it as many times as you want, with the difficulty of the enemies progressively getting harder each time. It was a great way to farm ethanol, and I've always loved completing the outposts in Far Cry. In fact, it has always been my favorite part of the game. Far Cry New Dawn also introduced a new side mission known as Expeditions, in which you fly to completely new and unique maps where you have to steal an item and escape without being killed. These expeditions were new and fresh experience, and for the most part, I really enjoyed them. There were also some great distractions in the game, like treasure hunts and lootable locations that introduced fun mysteries and exploration. The new home base system and prosperity 
prosperity I found to also be great and motivated my friend and I to grind the side content so we could level up our base and unlock cool new abilities and features. Now do beware this game is pretty small in terms of content. There are only 10 side missions and a small handful of outposts and expeditions. It took me and my friend only 17 hours to complete all the side objectives and the story. So if you're looking for a game to just pour your time into, Far Cry New Dawn probably isn't your best bet. I played the entirety of Far Cry New Dawn with one of my friends and overall I thought the co-op was pretty solid. We never got any connection issues and that all the missions were accessible with co-op. The one issue with co-op is that the second player, the one who joins the host, often gets screwed over. Like for example, I was the host and only I got the Joseph Seed abilities and my friend didn't get any of them. I also got a lot more perk points for completing challenges and the upgrades for for prosperity were only counted on my saved game. So if my friend wanted to go and play on his own save, he wouldn't have any of the upgrades or progression. It is not a huge deal, but my friend was pretty frustrated at not getting those awesome godlike abilities from Joseph Seed. As you may know, Far Cry New Dawn takes place in Hope County just like Far Cry 5. Unfortunately though, Far Cry New Dawn takes place in a sectioned off part of Hope County leaving a map to only a fraction of the size in Far Cry 5. Far Cry New Dawn's version of Hope County is a lot more vibrant and colorful than the original. It was obvious Ubisoft did this so it didn't feel like you were just playing on the exact same map, and for the most part, it worked. I liked this very colorful version of Hope County, and seeing some of the old locations from Far Cry 5 was pretty cool. However, the world definitely lacks variety, but to be fair, you aren't going to find much variety in a place like Montana. The world does a pretty good job of throwing distractions at you with quick time events, special monsters to hunt, and airdrops full of loot to make the world feel more alive and active. Again, the world does feel quite small, but it is still a fun and colorful world to traverse. Now I'm sure if you are planning to get this game on PC, you are probably wondering how this game runs, and the answer is, it runs pretty well. If you have a mid to high end PC, you should be able to run this game on ultra graphics and it will give you decent frame rates. There were some areas where you could feel the frames drop a significant amount, but other than that, Far Cry New Dawn is a pretty smooth ride. However, there were a good amount of technical issues with the game. My friend and I got black screens after completing an outpost very often, in fact it happened about half the time and we would have to restart the game. I also got a bug a handful of times where I would just be spawned and couldn't move. There were some other annoying glitches like invincible NPCs. My friend was even eaten alive by a car. The car is- the car is alive! The car is like eating my body! <laughs> I wouldn't say these bugs are enough to say the game is terrible, but some of them can be game breaking and getting black screens after almost every outpost was very frustrating. Oh my god. Jesus, I thought you were dead. With all things considered, should you buy Far Cry New Dawn in 2020? And well, it depends. If you're a big fan of the Far Cry series and love the Far Cry gameplay, or maybe you played Far Cry 5 and are curious to know what happens, then yeah, I would say you should buy it. But if you are just looking for a really fun open world that you can pour lots of time into, then I'd say you're better off picking up one of the main Far Cry titles or finding another open world game to play. Because truth be told, if you haven't played a Far Cry game before, then New Dawn is definitely not the game you should start with. So I'd say depending on what category you fall under should determine your decision on whether you should buy the game or not. It's probably also worth mentioning this game goes on sale quite often. In fact, when I picked it up on Steam, it was only like $16, so if you think it may be worth it to you at that price, then go for it. But anyways, that concludes the video. Thank you all so much for watching, and if you enjoyed the video or found it helpful, please feel free to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. We are almost at 1,000 subs, which I could not be more grateful for. So again, thank you all so much and have a great day.